Hello everyone, today we are going to look into configuring FortiGate as DNS server. You can use FortiGate as your local DNS server to add your DNS records. Depending on your requirements, you can either manually maintain your entries as a primary DNS server or use it to refer to an outside source as a secondary DNS server. I will try to explain you everything about DNS server in FortiGate and the video might be a little bit long so there will be multiple parts of the video. So first we go to the DNS part. As you can see this DNS part is configured for local in usage of the FortiGate device itself. You can use those configuration for the clients as well but that's not the aim of this video. So we have to go to feature visibility and enable DNS server feature. In DNS server, we first create a DNS service. In interface, you configure the incoming DNS query interface. In this case, I have a laptop connected to internal one, so I will choose internal one. You can configure different DNS modes in DNS service. For example, recursive. The system first checks for the requested record in the shadow database. By shadow means the FortiGate database itself. If the record is not found locally, the query is then forwarded to the DNS server for further lookup. This mode ensures a comprehensive search for the requested record utilizing both local and system DNS records. Then we have non-recursive. In this mode, search is restricted to the public DNS database only. If the requested record is not found, the query will not be forwarded to the system's DNS server. This mode is useful when you need to limit queries strictly to local resources and we have forward to system dns and this mode the local dns database is bypassed and all queries are forwarded directly to the system's dns server this is beneficial when you need to rely solely on system level dns resource for resolving queries and here we have the option to apply any type of dns filter on our queries this is a normal dns filter which you can find in security profiles then we can apply DNS over HTTPS or DNS over HTTP3 or DNS over Quick, which I will try to cover in another video. After configuring a DNS service on interface, we need to create a zone. In zone, we have primary and secondary. By primary, it means it will try to resolve the DNS record by itself. By secondary, this means this is a backup DNS server in case the main one fails. And we have view here, which we can choose shadow, public or proxy first shadow this type of dns zone is designed for both internal and external clients allowing them to resolve dns queries with the recursive dns server on fortigate it creates a shadow of your public dns records within your private network public this type of dns zone is intended to serve external clients only allowing them to resolve dns queries with the non-recursive dns server on fortigate it contains records that map the domain names of your publicly accessible services to their respective ip addresses this these records are propagated across internet allowing anyone in the world to find and connect to your services. And lastly, proxy. This special type of shadow DNS zone is specifically designed for explicit proxy. It allows the explicit proxy to perform DNS lookups using a database, providing faster and more efficient resolution of domain names. Internal users can experience improved performance and reduced latency when accessing websites and online services through the explicit proxy. Another configuration is DNS zone, where you can set your desired DNS zone. In this example, for the domain name, I choose com. House name of primary DNS can be anything. For example, I choose FortiGate. Contact email address is not mandatory. You can choose whatever you want. By default, if you don't add at sign blah blah dot com, it will automatically add the domain name to the email address. Then in TTL, you can define days, hours, minutes, so that DNS record is valid for. The next one is authoritative, which is very tricky. If you select this authoritative, that means the requests that are not in the database will not forward it to anywhere else. So that is the only source of the truth. In the examples, I will show the difference between authoritative and non-authoritative. And then we have DNS forwarder, where if the DNS record is not found, you can forward it to an external server. Then we create a new DNS entry. I choose address type A because I want to resolve a name to an IP address, but we have different modes to be configured. I will explain maybe in another video about the different modes and differences.
So then I will try to ping newly created DNS record. As you can see, even after flushing the DNS records, I get the actual DNS record and not the one that I set. And that's because in interfaces configuration, the DNS server to be used was configured as system DNS, not the interface DNS. So we will go to interfaces and change it. And then I will renew my IP address to get new DNS servers. So if I try it again, I should resolve it to the IP that I configured already, which is 6.6.6.6. .6 so that was about .com domains. And now I'm going to show the local domains. For example, I want to create Hussein.local domain. I will call the zone local, then domain name local. I don't want to put it as authoritative. I will choose a host name, then a random IP address. And if I try to resolve it, get the IP address. Of course, you have the option to do NS lookup, but in this case, I'm using ping. So what if I want to resolve another domain? For example, I want to resolve yahoo.com. As you can see, it is not possible because the DNS record is not inside the database and FortiGate is authoritative, so it does not forward to any other DNS servers. But if I turn off this option, as you can see, it can forward it to another DNS server and resolve the domain name to IP address. So that was it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I tried to keep this training as short as much possible, but I will have another video to give you more information about DNS server. So stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you with the next video.